Welcome to eRail Commerce's Tank Car 101 online tutorial. Our goal is to provide you with a basic understanding of the anatomy of a general purpose non pressurized tank car. Click on a hotspot to learn more about each individual component set. Once complete, either replay or X out of it to return to the main hub. The stencil provides valuable information about the car. The first three letters indicate the governing regulatory body that the cars are operating under. The next three numbers indicate the car type. The next letter is a separator that may indicate special features, such as thermal or head protection. The next three digits indicate the tank test pressure, which can range from 60 to 600 PSI. Next is a letter indicating tank car construction. The last number indicates special features of the tank car, such as linings, insulation, tank material, and fittings. When referring to position on a tank car, everything is oriented from the B end. The B end is always the end where the handbrake is attached. The A end is on the opposite end. When looking from the B end towards the A end, the left side is on the left and the right side is on the right. The orientation is reversed if looking from the A end towards the B end. Therefore, left side from the B end is the same side as the right side from the A end. The handbrake is a mechanical brake used to secure the tank car when it is not in motion. The tank consists of two heads and a shell. A non-coiled, non-insulated tank car is a single hole design. The shell is normally 7 16 inch thick for older cars and 1 half inch thick for newer cars built to the CPC 1232 specification. A coiled and insulated tank car utilizes a double hull construction commonly referred to as a tank within a tank. The inner tank is normally 7 16 inch thick. Welded to it are 12 runs of 8 inch diameter half oval heater coils. Steam or heated oil pumped into the coils conducts heat directly to the tank shell which in turn heats up the commodity inside for unloading. Fiberglass insulation is wrapped around the inner tank. A thin external shell called a jacket, made of 11 gauge carbon steel, encloses the fiberglass insulation. There are two types of underframes, the continuous through sill, common on older tank car types, and the stub sill, common on modern tank cars. The older continuous through sill is an uninterrupted bar running from one end of the car to the other. The modern stub sill has multiple components including the bolsters and the draft sill the bolsters attach to the truck assembly. Truck assemblies are made of the side frames and the bolster that connects them. Side frame springs, axles and wheel assemblies, and brake assemblies round out the major components on the trucks. The draft sill also houses the yoke, the draft gear, and the coupler. The yoke, housed inside the draft sill, keeps the draft gear and coupler enclosed and connected to each other, while allowing movement back and forth when the rail cars are pushed or pulled. The draft gear is the shock absorber which is indirectly connected to the coupler via the follower block. The coupler connects rail cars together. The bottom outlet valves allow for the commodity to be gravity unloaded from the bottom of the tank car. Common valves include the external ball valve, the wafer sphere valve, also known as a butterfly valve, the bottom operated plug valve, and the top operated plug valve. At the top of the tank car are several fittings and nozzles. The largest nozzle is a 20 inch internal diameter opening called the manway. It allows for unpressurized loading and unloading. When opened, it allows venting while using top or bottom unloading valves. It also affords access to the interior of the tank by trained technicians who can clean and repair the inside of the tank. The valve housing protects valves on the fitting's nozzle. In CPC 1232 tank cars, this housing is one half inch thick. The eduction valve sits atop the siphon pipe and is used as a connection fitting that can open and close during loading. The siphon pipe extends from the fitting's nozzle to the bottom of the tank car. It is used to siphon commodity from the bottom or to load commodity from the top. The air inlet valve or vapor valve allows the operator to pressurize or depressurize the inside of the tank car to facilitate unloading or loading respectively. The sample line is used to allow an operator to sample the commodity. Thermal wells are small pipes that are capped at the bottom. 
separating the heat conducting fluid inside the thermal well from the commodity within the tank. Heat transfers from the commodity through the walls of the thermal well to a heat conducting fluid such as glycol solution. The operator inserts a thermometer into the fluid to get the temperature of the commodity. Safety valves open when the atmosphere within the tank reaches greater than 75 psi, allowing excess vapor pressure inside the car to be released. There are two types of gauging devices, the visual gauge and the magnetic gauging device. The visual gauge is a metal ruler inside the tank visible from the manway. The magnetic gauging device has a steel ball that floats up a rod as commodity fills the car. Inside the hollow rod are magnets that push up the gauging rod as the ball travels up the rod. This concludes your Tank Car 101 training module. If you'd like to learn more about tank cars or other car types, please ask about our online training series that can be sold individually or as enterprise licenses. E-Rail Commerce appreciates the opportunity to share knowledge. Please contact us at training at erailcommerce.com to submit your input on how we can improve our training modules or grow our library of resources. E-Rail Commerce. Rail Commerce made easy.